Uh, g'day folks. Um, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube uh, going through the various layouts of internal combustion engines with the various numbers of cylinders, the pros and cons and that sort of thing. I wanted to make a video along the same lines but particularly in respect of classic motorcycles uh, and in general I'm talking about air-cooled motorcycles. I'll probably touch on water cooling a bit later. Obviously the the engine and its layout, number of cylinders, how well it's balanced, all that affects the motorcycle greatly. Um, the engine affects the power obviously, how well it's cooled, the amount of vibration, it can affect the handling of the motorcycle mainly through the centre of gravity which is often determined by the position of the engine. Uh, the wheelbase can be affected by the arrangement of the engine, uh, the weight of the motorcycle, cost, aerodynamics and there's also some more subjective characteristics such as feel slash character and of course the sound of the motorcycle. So looking at a single cylinder arrangement first off, um, I've got a rough sketch here, got a piston, conrod, a crankshaft, which runs through here and these, this is the crank throw of the crank. Uh, in, in that view uh, of course it will look somewhat like this. So you've got a bearing here, a bearing here, and your crankshaft runs through here. And this is your Conrod pin. Um, so what you've got, uh, as, as it's shown there, the piston is, is in mid-stroke. It's between bottom dead centre and top dead centre. Um, as this moves around into up to this position, it, the piston will move up to top dead centre. And as it comes around to the bottom, it'll, the piston will move to the bottom dead centre. So you've got this weight of this piston and part of this conrod that's reciprocating goes up, slows down, comes to a complete stop very momentarily and reverses and does the same thing at the bottom, slows down, stops, re reciprocates back up in the other direction. So as it's shown there, it's quite an unbalanced arrangement. So what designers like to do to try and improve the balance of this machine uh, is put a counterweight on the opposite side of the crank arm. So it roughly could look like this. And that they would sit, they actually, there's usually, there would be two of them, and they would sit on the ends of these webs here of the, of the crankshaft. So that weight hanging off the crankshaft is turning with the crankshaft and it counteracts the force of this piston coming up here and stopping. When, that, when that's at the top, that'll be at the bottom and it creates a force in this direction and it would be at the bottom going like that. And then when, when this gets to the top, the piston would be at the bottom. So the piston would be doing a, creating a force like that and this force would be up here like that. So it balances out in this direction. Now the only, the only problem with that is what you're in effect doing is balancing the forces out in that direction, but you're then creating an equal force in that direction, a reciprocating force. So what designers do is rather than make this compensate 100% for the reciprocating forces generated by the piston, they'll make this around about say 60 or 70 percent of the of the force so they'll greatly reduce in this plane the vibration by 60 to 70 percent and you'll end up with a force in this direction of 60 to 70 percent so you'll get you'll get um, 30 to 40 percent result in force this way and 60 to 70 percent result in that way. Now the reason you do that is because in most motorcycles 
the cylinder is vertically in the motorcycle and you very much feel the vibrations more in the vertical direction on a motorcycle than a longitudinally in the motorcycle between the wheels. So you can tolerate more forces longitudinally than you can vertically. So there is merit to, rather than placing the engine vertically in the motorcycle, place it horizontally. That way you could make this counterweight um, instead of 60 to 70 percent of the outer balance forces you could make it the equivalent of say 30 to 40 percent because you can tolerate more force between the wheels the engines already laid over in that direction so you don't need to reduce the forces in that direction by as much um, so this weight would be less um, it's less inertia on the crank, the crank will spin up faster, um, the whole motorcycle's a little bit lighter. So the centre of gravity of the engine is also lower and the mo whole motorcycle could potentially be made lower to the ground. Um, there could be some disadvantages in that the engine is longer between the wheels so it may affect the wheelbase and therefore affect the handling. Um, the cooling also might not be as good, being air-cooled with a vertical cylinder in a motorcycle. You'll have the fins like that. And you have a, a nice big cross-sectional area facing the breeze coming through. Um, with the engine horizontal in the motorcycle, you've got, and the breeze coming on here, you've got to get around the head basically and then you've got to have the fins running along the cylinder and what happens is it heats up the air so you you if cooling efficiency drops off by the time it gets down here because the air is already getting hot so potentially not as good at cooling um, Motorcycles that have uh, engines laid over like that tend to be a lot of small motorcycles, scooters, uh, mopeds, um, posty bikes, um, a lot of small motorcycles um, throughout the world are like that. Um, some of the bigger ones, there was a Guzzi Falcone, it was a 500cc that had it laid over like that. And Air Mackie made quite a few, up to 400 cc's in capacity. I think most manufacturers have made a vertically mounted single cylinder at one stage or another. Some examples of these, Ducati made some very pretty little singles in its early years. There was the GB500 Honda. Royal Enfield has made a stack of single cylinder motorcycles. This one's a Continental GT. The iconic Manx Norton and the Yamaha XT500. Getting back to what I said before about ending up with a vibration in this direction which is quite a bit more than in this direction. You can see that often in single cylinder motorcycles uh, when they're sitting there idling. The front wheel you can often see that going backwards and forwards springing on the forks that's because of this force along the motorcycle. Um, Harleys do the same sort of thing. Now they're not a single cylinder, but they're a, a narrow angle V-twin. So they tend to work very much like a parallel twin, a 360 degree parallel twin. Both cylinders almost going up and down together and they're very close together too. So I'll get into that in, in the next video. Um, but um, Harleys are pretty badly balanced um, and that's why they do that front wheel shaking thing as well. Um, now with single cylinder engines uh, being a four stroke obviously you have one combustion or power cycle every two revolutions or 720 degrees. So a single cylinder 
engine has a very big spacing between its power pulses uh, and that's why people look to two and more cylinders to get a smoother running engine which is more consistent torque output but we'll get into that in the next video so the next video will be about parallel twins thanks for watching